During his time in the National Hockey League, Dustin Bufflin was one of the most unique players the league had ever seen. Big Buff was what some would call a freak of nature, with a blend of skill, toughness, and physicality like no other player. And at 6'5", 260 pounds, close to the size of the average defensive end in the NFL, there was virtually no player who could challenge him. Bufflin was a fan favorite in every city he played in, helped the Blackhawks to their first Stanley Cup win since 1961, became an all-star defenseman in his only season with Atlanta, embraced the city of Winnipeg and gave the Jets organization eight great seasons, all while doing it all on the ice as both a forward and defenseman, and providing some of the biggest hits in NHL history. Bufflin also had one of the most unusual retirements of all time, when prior to the 2019-20 season he would unexpectedly miss training camp, undergo an ankle surgery while away from the team, then decide in January that he would not be working his way back to the team, and then in April ended up walking away from the remaining two years and $14 million left on his contract. Dustin Bufflin grew up near Minneapolis, Minnesota, and went to Roseau High School before his junior hockey career. Almost everyone will tell you that hockey is in your blood if you're from Rosa. Like most kids in Minnesota, he grew up cheering for the North Stars and wanted to be like Mike Bodato. Although Bufflin was raised by a single mother, he didn't look at his early life as if it were a hardship and said he grew up the same as most everyone did. He did admit, however, that it was tough not having a dad, but he luckily had grandparents who were always there for him when his mom couldn't be. With hockey being the expensive sport that it is, and with money being tight and Dustin growing at a rapid rate, his mom Cheryl decided that rather than buying skates, she'd work out a deal to rent skates with a sporting goods store in Grand Forks, North Dakota. In addition, his mother would leave for work at 5.30 every morning and drop Dustin off at the rink on the way. This meant he'd often be waiting in the cold for upwards of half an hour for his coaches to get there for his 6.30 practice. Part of the reason why Bufflin ended up playing junior hockey in Canada, perhaps rather than college hockey in the US like the majority of kids in Minnesota, was due to the fact that he was not a very good student. In fact, he hated school, didn't see the point of it, and gave little to no effort to it. Because of this, he wasn't able to meet the academic requirements and couldn't play for his high school hockey team, the Rosa Rams. In hindsight, Buff wishes he would have paid more attention in school, as he feels he missed out on some big moments like possibly playing in the state championship like his cousin did. Bufflin would end up playing for a AAA midget team in Chicago when he was 16. And that was where a scout noticed him and invited him to a Western Hockey League tryout with both Brandon and Prince George. Dustin would impress the coaches enough to eventually earn a roster spot with the Prince George Cougars. And this was when he started to see that hockey might end up giving him a chance to do something big with his life. Bufflin did understand that at the time he was far from NHL material, weighing in at about 275 pounds. And he always had guys telling him that he'd be a lot quicker if he lost about 20. In the 2003 NHL entry draft, the Chicago Blackhawks took a chance on Bufflin, selecting him in the 8th round, 245th overall, out of the 292 taken in that draft. Big Buff would spend a few years going up and down from the NHL to the AHL, with Chicago's affiliate at the time, the Norfolk Admirals, and then Rockford Icehogs. In the 2008-09 season, he would gain a full-time roster spot with the team, and then in the 2010 playoffs, he would be a huge piece in the Blackhawks' Stanley Cup victory. He finished the playoff run tied for the team lead in goals with 11, as well as a team leading 5 game winning goals, all while providing a blend of size, skill and toughness that no one could quite match. What made Bufflin so special was not only his play on the ice, but also what he brought outside of hockey, in the locker room with his teammates and just being true to himself. Former Hawks star defenseman Duncan Keith talked about how much of a character Buff really was. And guys were asking him, just getting to know him, you know, like, what do you, do you, do you know, have you heard of Joe Sackick? And he's like, I, who's that guy, you know? <laughs> never heard of Brandon Shanahan, never heard of him, never knew anything, never, well, I don't watch hockey, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves hockey, don't get me wrong, he, just because he doesn't loves watch playing it, it, he loves playing hockey. But he doesn't necessarily yeah. care about the other shit. Because of cap-related issues, Chicago would end up trading Buffalo in the offseason, along with Ben Eager, Brent Sopel, and a prospect, to the Atlanta Thrashers for a first and second round pick, Jeremy Moran, and Marty Reasoner. Bufflin would spend one season with Atlanta before they were relocated to Winnipeg, and despite enjoying his time in Atlanta, he was excited to go to Winnipeg and be closer to his home in Minnesota. In the Jets' first game back in Winnipeg, the fans immediately fell in love with Bufflin, 
as he laid out Jackets forward Matt Calvert just a few seconds into the game. No doubt about this. I've never seen a playoff atmosphere for the first game this season. And all Dustin Buff this was a sign of what Buffalo would bring to the city of Winnipeg night in and night out. And not only would he provide physicality, but he also would put up points, tallying at least 45 points as a defenseman in six of his eight seasons with the Jets. He would also play in two All-Star games as a Jet in the 2015 and 2016 seasons and would establish himself as one of the NHL's best two-way defensemen. In his time with the Jets, he would also help Winnipeg get back to the playoffs in the 2014-15 season, would help them get all the way to the conference finals in the 2018 playoffs while putting up nearly a point per game, and also another playoff berth in the 2018-19 season in what would end up being his final year of hockey. Bufflin has brought the hockey world so much joy over his career, not only for fans of the teams he played for, but also for fans of the game in general. We had never seen a player quite like Dustin Bufflin, and we may never see a player like him again. Whether it was the ankle injury that made him retire, the lost love for the game, or some reason that we will likely never know, we should all remember that Big Buff gave everything he had and left it all out on the ice when he played. Although he had a big personality with his teammates, he preferred to stay more low-key with his private life. Despite this being the case, we can imagine Bufflin is enjoying his retirement, ice fishing back in Minnesota, and taking care of his wife and kids.